Murder in the Family starts Thursday, 13th of July on ITV1. Good evening, I'm Ness Jenkins. First Minister Mark Drakeford said it was disappointing that backup plans weren't in place before the pandemic. Addressing the inquiry into the handling of COVID, Mr Drakeford said much of his government's time was taken up with Brexit planning. Our political editor, Adrian Masters, reports. Normally at this time on a Tuesday, Mark Drakeford would be facing questions in the Senate chamber. Instead, he's come to London to face questions about how his government prepared for the COVID pandemic. You may have known of problems or flaws in the system, but unless the government around you identifies those flaws and determines it will act upon them, nothing is likely to be done, is it? So just to try and make myself plainer if I can, uh, by the time I become First Minister, I am not unaware uh, of the issues that have been faced by the Welsh Government or the exercise in which the Welsh Government has been involved. When I become First Minister, I do not receive advice from the civil service that says you need to be particularly aware of difficulties that we are now experiencing in these fields. But other Welsh Government figures have said there were gaps in planning. Earlier, the former Health Minister admitted that incomplete plans had caused real pain. All of this work was not fully completed. And that meant that when Covid came, we were not as prepared as we could and should have been. And that does, yes, Ms Shepherd, lead to additional pain for bereaved families. And do you accept that you had responsibility to plan for that? Yes, I'm a minister in the government. Of course, it's my responsibility. Responsibility is what this inquiry is about, and some bereaved families have been here watching and listening for themselves. I asked one of them what she made of what she'd heard. Everything seems to be in draft. It was incomplete. It was unfinished. Um, it's just not good enough. You know, people died. And do you think the Welsh government was worse or better prepared than other parts? Um, that seems to be worse, worse prepared. It sometimes seems like another world. Lockdowns, masks, social distancing. Political decisions affected all of us during the pandemic. Now every one of those decisions is being looked at very closely. Adrian Masters in London there. In other news, a Monmouthshire couple have spoken of their near 20-year pain after their son went missing. James Nutley disappeared in October 2004 on a night out in Tenby and hasn't been seen since. Now his parents say any information about him would provide them with some answers. Lewis Rhys-Jones reports. Well, here he is with his two best friends then. It's been nearly 19 years since Catherine and Geoffrey's son went missing and not a day goes by where they don't think about him. James Nutley was 25 at the time he went on a golfing trip to Tembe with his friends. This CCTV shows him heading out to a bar. Another camera spotted him later that night walking back to his hotel, but he never made it to the door. He hasn't been seen since. The first thing we heard about was uh, the following day. On the Monday, I was working and my sister came with a friend of mine. And she said, Catherine, there's no easy way to say this. James has gone missing in Tenby. Went home. There's Geoffrey. Absolute state. Mm. You taking the phone call, I assume. Yeah. yeah, from the police to say that James had gone missing. So my brother-in-law then came around. He said, I'll take you. And then off we went down to Tenby. James's driving licence and other cards were found on Tenby's South Beach, which led police to think he might have gone into the water. We go there and we look and we think, well, yeah. how on earth could you get in the yeah. water from here? It was very difficult, really, to, to get over there. And, he, and he's not going to commit suicide or anything like that. He's, like he could have been blown over, but if he was blown over, because it was blowing a force eight gale. But then, thinking out then, there is a picture of him on the camera of him starting to cross the road. 
170,000 people are reported missing every year. Catherine recently opened up about her family's experience of losing James in a new podcast, in hope that it may bring them answers. It's nearly 19 years since James disappeared. Do you still hope and like to think that you'll one day get an answer to his disappearance? Until someone tells us different, James yeah, is out there somewhere. We, we carry on, we carry on, because choice, <laughs> there isn't, isn't choice, you know, it's just the way it is and that's, can't change it. Yeah, and it's sad to think what he's missing. We would like to know, is James with us or isn't he? Closure. Catherine and Geoffrey visit Tenby twice a year, once on James's birthday and on the anniversary of his disappearance. They will never give up hope in finding out what happened to their son. Lewis Rees Jones, ITV News. Eight in ten shoppers in Wales are worried about rising food prices. That's according to the consumer group Witch. A survey by the organisation has shown it's working age parents who are struggling the most with rising food bills. It's also found people are finding it difficult to eat healthily, with calls for supermarkets to have more budget options available. And finally, celebrations are underway ahead of the NHS's 75th anniversary. A Great Western Railway train has been renamed the Aneurin Bevan to mark the occasion. And Issa Farfour reports now from Newport. This was the moment when a contribution made in the past was recognised for the future. 75 years ago, the health service was founded by Aneurin Bevan. And to mark the occasion, this train was renamed to celebrate his legacy. The NHS itself is such an important organisation. Sometimes we take it for granted. As a type 1 diabetic, I know how important the NHS is, but it's important to everybody. Uh, and to be able to celebrate that here in South Wales, in the birthplace of Nye Bevan, just down the road, uh, that's really important to us. His political opponents. Born in Tredega, Nine Bevan was one of the most influential ministers of the post-war Labour government. Despite opposition, he was responsible for the creation of the National Health Service. It was his idea, his project, his wish to see free health care for all. It was a happy birthday, not only for the health service, but also to the first baby to be born under the NHS. I feel privileged as a child. I didn't understand the significance of a health service. And my mother always introduced me. This is now my national health baby. I am very proud to be standing here today, naming this train the Anirin Bevan. It's a message to the country and to the governments of today of how much the national health means to Great Britain and never to lose sight of why it was formed in the first place. So what is the connection between the railway and the health service? One historian says there are strong links between those working in both industries. For Swindon in particular, the GWR Medical Fund, which was the friendly society set up by the workers, was very important because it was one of the first and so Nye Bevan mentioned in the speech, and so we can see that it was very important. This is the first journey for this train heading to London, but it's a lasting tribute that recognises Bevan's achievements for those passengers who use the health service when they need it the most. Issa Farfour reporting there. Well, summer doesn't seem quite on track at the moment. Are things set to change? Let's find out from Ruth, who's got the latest weather forecast. Alfie. Transport for Wales. Proud sponsors of ITV Cymru Wales Weather. Hello there, good evening to you. Northern areas saw the best of the blue sky and sunshine today, with the southeast in particular seeing some really heavy rain. A similar setup as we had through the next few days, and then by the time we get to the end of the week, a little heads up that a ridge of high pressure will build, and a change in wind direction to something slightly more southeasterly means that we'll have a bit of blast of hot air coming in from the near continent. Highs by Friday of up to 27 Celsius before it all turns and settled again just in time for the weekend. 
It is pretty settled out there at the moment. We have had a few showers and we're likely to see a few showers developing over the next few hours. So by the early hours of Wednesday morning, certainly through northern and central parts of Wales, it's going to be quite unsettled. Down towards the far southeast where we've had the rain today, things have dried out quite nicely. Temperatures hovering at around 10 or 11, so nothing too much to worry about here. And it is a little bit on the breezy side. But it means for central and northern areas in particular, it is going to be an unsettled start to tomorrow. Real flip in fortune, if you like, with the southeast seeing some decent weather as we start the day. But really, as we head through the course of Wednesday, it is going to be a case of, well, there could be a shower cropping up at any point, any time, anywhere, with some decent spells of sunshine too. Fresh out towards the west, further inland though, topping out with highs of around 21 degrees. Good night. Travnidiaeth Cymru, yn falch i noddi tywydd ITV Cymru Wales. And that's all we've got time for tonight. Andrew Jones will be back with your morning headlines on Good Morning Britain. But for now, no star.